Hello everyone and welcome back to my complete run through of Kerbal Space Program 0.23 where all our missions are crewed and we are going through the tech tree as quickly as possible and here we are we've got 1130 points which uh, were from the mission to Ike in the last episode so what do I want to use them for is the question uh, these are mostly airplane parts here and we're not doing that and since we're uh, doing crewed missions we don't need any probe cores like this so perhaps we should just plunge on ahead specialized construction the hitchhiker storage container is somewhat interesting as are docking ports though I really want the big docking port because eventually we want to put that little station up where is it uh, it's all the way back here is or even earlier or where is the station? Uh, the research lab, I mean. Huh. I'm not seeing where the research lab is. Oh well. Anyway, uh, oh, the little ones. Uh, no, that's not it. Solar panels would be good. Oh, these are the little. Yeah, I, I want the little rockets. Those could make things much more efficient on certain missions, especially to low gravity bodies like like Ike was, in fact. So let me get those. Um, nuclear propulsion. Well, maybe I should hold off on that. Uh, large control. No, I haven't even used RCS, have I? Have I bought RCS? Yeah, I've got RCS, I just haven't used it. Um, well, maybe I should have an excuse to use RCS. I'll get docking ports. Alright. I don't want to get too far in without filling out this, so let's let's just fill this out. I think I've got enough points just to finish this stage. Okay, what's this now? More airplane parts. Uh, really, the whole tech tree ended up marginalizing airplanes. There are modified tech trees if you want to do modding. We, uh, this series isn't modded, so this is all stock. But uh, there are modified tech trees that increase the importance of aircraft, and those are good. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a good idea, because otherwise you don't end up using them very much. Um, uh, good landing legs? Well, heck. Uh, well, no, let me just uh, peek at some of these because we've got 380 and these cost 300 out here. Uh, what do we have? We have... Oh, this one going here. Which? What is this one? Oh, we can't even see it yet. Okay. Um, nukes. Stuff we don't need. Other docking ports. The smaller ones, actually. Uh, stuff we can't get. Probe cores we don't need. Ion drives we can't use because we are doing manned missions. Uh, larger electrics, well we just got the new solar panels so we're not in any hurry. Uh, more science could be good. And wheels aren't really necessary as are the small little bodies. Uh, I mean we're not putting any, well we could do rover stuff soon, but not quite yet. Um, so, these are interesting. Are they, are they more interesting than this or this? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we'll, we'll get these, uh, these science parts. Alright, so that's our science spent. Let's go to the VAB to see what we can do now. Actually, cancel that. Uh, it occurred to me that if we're going to do a mission we need to figure out which planet we need to go to and that means here in the tracking station can't say that any possibilities look particularly good here not right now uh, actually Moho's in position Moho's about the only one though so a mission of Moho that would take a lot of Delta V. But we could make... Well, that would take a lot of Delta V. 
I mean, uh, uh, what you can look at it actually is um, here, Kerbin's uh, speed is uh, 9,284. Moho is 1,400 and uh, uh, 14,690. So there's about a 5,000 meter per second difference. Sort of expect that trying to get there. Uh, that's that's about what you need. So anyway, let's let's go back to the VAB and see whether I can actually construct a rocket of that size. I'm pretty sure that's going to be beyond my capabilities here. Uh, let, let's just load up my previous rocket. So the one that I used last time was the Theta. Okay, and here it is. It worked pretty well. Worked pretty well, but if, if we're just going to do a flyby of Moho, maybe we don't need so much of this stuff. On the other hand, if we do a flyby of Moho, I'm probably going to end up leaving my Kerbal stranded, which I have managed not to do in this series so far. Hmm. Perhaps I should just time warp and uh, wait for a Duna encounter. After all, we're not done with all our science around Duna. And I think a Moho situation requires a little bit more thought than just popping in and saying, here, I'll go to Moho today. Uh, yeah. So let's get some more sciencey stuff here. Well, it seems to me that we can't really go to Moho without a nuclear drive. So we're going to be going to Duna. And we'll just wait for the opportunity to do so. And so we do need some seismometers, I mean seismic accelerometers. So let me tuck them in here and here. We really probably only need one, but so that's us with science. Yeah. Now, was this really enough to get off of the surface of Duna? I don't remember. And we're probably going to need to use the parachutes to go down. But is that really safe? I don't know that either. Hmm. It seems like this is a pretty, pretty challenging mission. So let's have Jeb do it. Yeah, I think uh, Jeb is up for this mission, and we will be needing him. Alright, uh, but otherwise I'm not going to make any changes. I think this vehicle worked fine on Ike, so I don't see any reason to change it at all. And we'll still call it Theta. So let's launch, and hope for the best. Okay, now I'm going to be a bit mean to Jeb. I'm actually going to leave him on the launch pad while I time warp through to where our encounter will be. Hopefully that will not destroy the ship. It's gonna be a while though. Um, we're going to have to actually come around behind Duna until there's that 45 degree angle. Okay well that looks like us with our window so let's return back to yep very nice. Oh, it's night time. Well, we've time warped 100 days or more, so let's just time warp a little bit more to get the sun. So here we are with Jeb Kerman on his mission to to land on Duna. SAS is on, throttle is up, and Jeb looks ready to go. So let's launch.
Oh, it occurs to me that I should be doing some of the new science experiments while I'm here. Okay, yeah, Kerbin's at upper atmosphere. Uh, the seismic reading I should have done on the surface. Right now, I guess it will probably be useless. Yeah. Should have probably also checked with Werner von Kerman to make sure I knew exactly which sciences I had already covered and which I had not. Because we are going to do the system once again. I don't want to do anything any repetition though of course now we are shown you know it's zero science so I don't have to I don't think I have to keep track of it that much okay I'm got close to uh, apoapsis but perhaps I can burn straight out instead of uh, just making orbit first not really straight out but you know from this side now Uh, I don't think that's quite gonna work. Alright, well we're gonna have to make orbit then. Okay, apoapsis. Alright, an encounter in 75 days. Sounds good to me. 75 days is not too bad. Of course, we don't have any oxygen to worry about, so not bad at all. Okay, 78 days, but uh, 9,000 kilometers, 9,000 kilometers, yeah, that'll be the best we can do there, and that's fine. Uh, plenty of fuel to spare, as, as there was before. Certainly the fastest exit out of Kerbin that I typically do, after a very slow launch though, the launch stage is very, very slow, but off we go. I'll meet you on the mid-course plane change. Okay, and here we are, about the right place. And it occurs to me that first of all we need to do some science. We haven't actually done a goo in mid... everywhere. Uh, high over the sun, right. The goo feels right at home here. I uh, need a new one for that. Okay, 110. I think that's definitely worthwhile. Uh, do we get to do temperature scans out here? That's a shame, because I know that temperature does exist around here, but oh well. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure that if temperature doesn't, barometer definitely doesn't. Right. Alright, uh, we've never actually done a science junior here, but we want to do that on the surface of Duna. So I'll hold off on that. Now, time for the... Oh, and it actually lets me make a maneuver node. That's rare. Um, yep, the adjustment burn. Okay, witness it is pretending that I'm going to end up with uh, Duna periapsis of 71 kilometers with only a 5 meter per second burn, but it's not going to give me that. But I want that on record that it, it, it pretended that. Right, so we're going to be right here as we're getting. Uh, okay, it's not twitchy like anything, and uh, 500k is good enough for me. We'll make the uh, final adjustments once we get in. Okay, so here we are in our approach to the red planet, and we are indeed closer than it said we would be, 362. Let's, let's adjust ourselves so that we aren't in this weird inclination. A weird inclination isn't necessarily bad for landing, but... Hmm, well now it's not letting me do much by way of maneuver nodes. Uh, nope. Nothing before here, huh? Alright. And... Right.
Yeah, please ignore any icon counter. We are not doing that this time. And we just want to get within about 11.5 kilometers. We don't care whether we're going to make orbit or not. Uh, we can just land. So, so that is a luxury. And it looks like it's going to be a luxury that isn't going to cost us too much. Now, I do want to separate the parachutes. We don't really have a drogue chute, do we? I don't know if these will be very good in this situation. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to rely on this stage to do our slowdown. Rather than trying to use parachutes. Of course, aside from the atmosphere. But the atmosphere is not going to be good enough for the burning off all the speed. It's just not thick enough. Okay, so I guess maybe we're too far off from Duna to really have a good look at it from here. Oh, there it is. Alright. Ha, huh, okay, that's an interesting position for us to be in for our approach, but that's the way the burn is. All right. Seems to be going up now. Bit of a retro burn should fix that. If I can find my retrograde marker, there it is. Or I guess it's not really fixing that at all. Hmm. Maybe around here. Aha. There we go. But that's too much. And now it's indecisive. Okay, well, I think that'll be about right. 11 kilometers should be fine. Woo, okay, oh, no, not quite all the way. Well, I should have, uh, perhaps made orbit just to avoid landing on the dark side I guess but I don't think that's going to be a huge issue I think we are going to be on the light side let's just see how this looks uh, well maybe maybe not we'll be close yeah alright anyway atmospheric entry time We do have to make sure our periapsis doesn't just dip too quickly. Otherwise we won't have enough time to burn off the speed before landing. Okay, and here's where that's going to be important. Okay, well our periapsis isn't really dipping too much. I am going to make a little bit of a burn here. Alright, now we need to get ready for landing. I can extend the landing gear. Oh, it's in the dark. Okay, well, you know what? I don't want it in the dark. So I'm going to flip around and start burning to make sure we don't land here. Huh, I'm, I'm probably doing this wrong. Uh, let me actually 
be a little bit more forthright about this. Uh, okay, that looks a little bit better. Yeah, actually, that looks very good. Alright, so what we're going to have is uh, sort of a hop. And then we've got to come right back down. Hopefully not right at that cliff edge there. But, but yeah, that's the idea. Alright, so now we need to be retrograde. Took a bit of fuel, though. Sunrise on Duna. Well, Duna is pretty smooth, so I'm not concerned about where we land, I think. Uh, except for this ridge seems a little bit worrisome, but the rest of it looks pretty smooth. I think we can just go for it. I mean, this looks reasonable terrain. Okay, I once again don't know how high the terrain is, and it could be pretty high on Duna. Okay, I'm gonna IVA quickly, and we're not below 3,000 meters yet. But it is still pretty fast, so let's get rid of some of this speed here. Tough to see the the land. It's just one big red blob. Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh crap! Uh. Oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot. Come on. Quicker, 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 quicker. Uh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, gear up, I think. If that's possible anymore. Do I have control over this thing? Oh, okay, yeah, sort of. Why can't I bring the gear up? This is very strange. Um... Well, we're clearly going to have to rescue Jeb, which is a heck of a lot better than lamenting the loss of Jeb, but why can't I get the gear up so I can put this in the right position? Okay, um, well, let's do our business here. 200 signs, too bad we're not going to be bringing it back. Uh, opening the sample container, you, f you find that everything has turned red. Initial tests show that you'll never wash out. You'll never wash. It'll never wash out of white space suits. You consider sending missions in pink EVA suits to reduce cleaning costs. Very good. How about uh, material container? I observed the goo. Right. Uh, seismic. 
Okay. 160 science for that. Yeah, don't worry. I know I'm not going to get any of the science back. Alright. Now, do I get Jeb back? Do I get Jeb out of this? I don't think so, because I don't think I can get him back in very easily. I think I'm going to have to leave him like this for a while. At least until I've got another mission over here to pick him up. Well, that's going to be an interesting... Uh, well, it's going to be a while. I can't... Because we can't just use a single person pod. We'll have to at least have a, two people in it. And... Uh, I mean, two places. One person in it. Yeah, so I'm going to leave Jeb in there. He can plant the flag once we have our rescue vehicle present. So, on that note, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And, well, see you next time.